Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. As promised, I sat down with Ben Affleck. Let's take a look. We need a new coach, Jack. Then you know your gifts seem heaven sent. Is the team any good? No. The last time they made the playoffs, back when you were playing. Let's go, line up. You're Marcus, right? That's right. How many threes did Marcus make last year? A percentage of 26. Yeah. Want to know why they're leaving you open? It's because they don't think you could hit the ocean from the beach. Oh. <laughs> Yo, he just spit backs at your ass, bro. <laughs> Well, hi guys. I'm Selena Johnson from Sister Circle Live. What's up, um, Sister Circle Live? Sister Circle Live. I don't know if we have anything to offer the Sister Circle. <laughs> no. Wait, what do we have? Hey, I can no more. <laughs> you know what? Okay, first of all, um, I love the movie because it really, it wasn't just another basketball movie, but it was more so um, about men. You saw so many different stories about men and the different woes that they go through. You saw single fathers. You saw so many different um, elements and role models of men. So the question that I have is, was that intentional as far as the writing is concerned? I agree with you. I think that's one of the really compelling things that, you know, men being vulnerable with one another, being honest with one another, is not something that is necessarily encouraged a lot. Um, but it is really valuable. And I've had experiences and been around people, and even this experience, getting to know these guys and having them trust me and asking them like questions about what their lives are like is, is very therapeutic and valuable, you know? And, and uh, I think, you know, Melvin's character was emblematic of that level of vulnerability when he played that scene where he had to come ask for his job back, you know, his spot back. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to play. Uh, but it is something that men need, I think, to get in touch with because I think you never really came, I haven't met anybody I really thought was wise who I didn't also think was humble and vulnerable and honest, you know? And sometimes people mistake that for weakness. Ah! Look, we're not gonna make it all back in one possession. You gotta just keep chipping away and chipping away. Take it to the rack. It's you. And another thing, like there were so many father-son dynamics. Um, so for some of you guys, did you see any parallels between some of the relationships between the fathers and son, sons in your own personal life, between you and your dads? Mm. Ooh. Uh, just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to take nobody out. I'm just trying to get answers. <laughs> uh, I, I had, my father's an alcoholic and I had a, a, a not a super easygoing relationship with him, and you drew on some of that. Uh, he's sober now, he's been sober for 30 years, and he's doing very well, uh, and, and my hat is off to him. But, you know, um, the relationship between boys and their fathers is complicated. You know, on the one hand, you want your father to be your hero, on the other hand, you realize, like, nobody's a hero. And, and it takes some maturity to get to a point where you're like, you know, it sounds like a weird thing, but we all have to ultimately kind of forgive our parents because as children, you expect perfection. They're always there for you. They're always right. They always support you. And then you hit a certain age, at least I did, where you go like, you know, they did their best. Because I know that's all I'm doing as a father, and I make plenty of mistakes, and I try hard, you know. Mm -hmm. so I think about it, you know, when I have my kids, that's my sole focus, and then you do something stupid, and you just feel like, why did I say that, you know? <laughs> um, and it's because we're not perfect. We, we, you know, we try our best, and I think sometimes the role of fathers, with both with sons and daughters, is, you know, um, undervalued in some ways. It's, it's, it's really important for dads to show up and to be like, present in the children's lives. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. What's going on with you? What's new? Not much. I hate the idea of you down there by yourself all the time. Just drinking. I'm fine. I appreciate it. But it's, I'm fine. You know, I read a, um, an article in the New York Times where you talked about this movie was therapeutic for you. One of the, the scenes in the movie, you were seeing a therapist. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask some of the young guys, too, like, when you saw that part in the, the film, you know, we talk about therapy with adults. You know, our adults are in our 40s and 30s. But for young men, do you find that there is no place for you really to emote effectively? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I think, you know, I think times have changed now. I think that men, it's still pretty bad in terms of toxic masculinity, but I think we've gotten better and kind of cope with our feelings. And I think I see, like, if you asked me a few years ago about therapy, I would have said, like, 
they're, they're crazy, you know, especially in, in, the, in the black community, especially we really don't believe in like uh, therapy and therapy sessions and stuff. And it's crazy to me. And um, yeah, I think that, you know, we are slowly but surely getting better in terms of trying to uh, release our emotions and show vulnerability to others. So, yeah. That's interesting. I, that's a shame. I didn't know that about the. About, I didn't know that perception of the black community. Because I, I do think, you know, I mean, however you do it, developing a community, developing a relationship with someone who you can be honest with, is really valuable and helpful. And for some people, that's a therapist. I think therapy can be very, very helpful. Granted, it can also be expensive. It's not available to everybody, you know, uh, and it's not easy to find. And you can get a lot out of, you know, really close friendships where you can say, hey, I'm afraid, I'm worried about this. Like, this scares me, you know. And, and if you're able to say that, like, you can release a lot of that fear and you can find a lot more confidence. And I, I, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a good process uh, if you can afford it and, and well worthwhile. Show how much of you I could let in. I heard you're coaching basketball. Yeah, keeps me busy. Keeps my mind off other things, you know. Once you settle down, baby, here you love your spirit. A lot of time hurting myself. I made a lot of bad decisions. I had a lot of regrets. Well, last question for each of you, and that everybody is inclusive to everyone. If there's one word that you can use to describe this film, what would that word be? Resilient. Inspiring. Forgiving. Mm -hmm. I like Brandon speaking. Perseverance. <laughs> Perseverance. There you go. Empathy. Empathy. Y'all did y'all thing on all of those words. <laughs> <laughs> Keep pressing, traffic, taking charges, make her like a size and advantage. Oh, hey, go, 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 lock up. Oh, offensive, offensive, <laughs> Jack, he's six inches shorter than you. How does he make that shot? Jack, come on, you're in the on your man. That's it, beautiful. Amazing movie, The Way Back opens in theaters tomorrow, so make sure you go see it. Yes. It was I all